Welcome to the G5 Hive and our next installment of our Worker B series, where we deep dive to the G5 college football landscape with the folks that know the teams the best. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're listening on podcast form, please rate and review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Kennesaw State Owls, who finished three and la- six last season in the FCS. This year, they made the move up to the FBS and joined Conference USA. They wrapped up their 2024 spring practice with their spring game on April 19th. We have a special guest joining us today. He is a sports copy editor for the Kennesaw State Sentinel, co-host of the Owl Chat podcast, sports correspondent for the Marietta Daily Journal, and an Atlantic Sun and Conference USA hoops guy. He is Kai Millette. Kai can be found at Owl Ch- Chat Podcast on X. Welcome to the show, Kai. Thanks so much for having me, man. That was a sweet intro. All right. Uh, for those not familiar with the Owl's offensive style, how would you describe it? Um... Still sort of to be determined this year. Um, so they ran the triple option um, for a long time, uh, first eight years or so of the program. Um, just the straight triple option like you used to see at Georgia Tech. Our coach, Brian Bohannon, came from the Paul Johnson tree. Um, and then uh, there are some new blocking rules that came in two years ago or so, and that kind of killed off the triple option. Uh, you s- still see some of the military schools trying to run it, but made it a lot tougher for us. Um, we went out and hired Chris Klonakis as our OC, um, tried more of a spread type of option or like a spread offense with some option elements, still a lot of QB draws, um, you know, a lot of triple option type plays, uh, just out of the gun instead. Um, and this year, um, we hired Chandler Burks as our offensive coordinator and he was, um, the second starting quarterback, uh, for the team back in like 2017, um, and he ran, you know, in the triple option. So we think that we're going to go more towards that, but also because of the rules that, you know, got put in place two years ago or so, there's certain things that we still can't do. Um, so we're, we're all waiting ourselves. We don't really know, um, but it's, it's going to be run heavy. Um, that, I think that's the only thing I could tell you for sure. All right. Well, let's get to the position where it all starts on offense and that's the quarterback. Last season starter, Jonathan Murphy has graduated. This leaves Davis Bryson as the only quarterback in the room with game experience for the Owls last year. He was 1 for 10 for 23 yards and had 174 yards rushing. They bring in Earl Woods III from Jacksonville State. He came in after the spring. But is it safe to assume that this is uh, Davis Bryson's job here heading into fall camp? Um, Heading into camp, sure. Uh, When game one rolls around, we'll see. Um. There's also uh, Kaleeb Johnson, who was at Louisville two years ago. He played uh, Juco for a year last year. Um, and now he's here. Uh, they seem to be excited about him. Um, the Coach Bohannon seems to be implying that this is Bryson's job to lose um, right now. Um, but week one, who knows? You know, it's way too early to name a starter. But um, what I'm basically hearing is Bryson has earned the right uh, to have a chance. Um, but it's a long season. Uh, I predict we will see all three of those guys if um, they don't redshirt. So, for those not familiar with Davis Bryson, how would you describe his game? Uh, lightning speed, uh, smaller guy. He's only 5'9, five, 5'10, five, give or take. Um, really, really fast. I mean, he can get it done with his legs. Um, obviously, as you can tell from the numbers, the, the passing needs work. Um, he, had little to no success. I think he might've completed a second pass, but it was against one of the non NCAA teams we played or whatever. Um, But it's Rocky. He's got to improve, Um, but he's an athlete. Um, He's going to be able to do some things um, and he's not going to be an easy assignment for any defense. Uh, So like there's potential there, um, but we're going to need to see more out of him uh, through the air if we want to do anything this year. I would assume all the options there, like Bryson, are, are true dual threat, just given the offense. Um, but is there any? Is there one in particular you think maybe is a better passer than the others? Or um, I think we're all really excited about Earl Woods um, from Jacksonville State. He was, you know, like a high school player of the year at Alabama. Um, he th- I think he got a little bit of time at Jack State last year, um, but like he was. He, you know, decently rated coming out of high school. Um, he's got impressive film. It looks like he's got a good arm. Um, and then Khalid Johnson uh, is a bigger kid um, with a bigger arm, and there's a reason he was at a Power 5 school. 
Um, they're going with, I think the reason they're going with Bryson as of right now, um, if that is the case, is just um, his experience within the offense. Uh, he's been around longer than those guys have. Um, and so things are just going to run more smoothly right now. But um, I don't know. I, I selfishly want to see Earl Woods play because Jacksonville State is our most hated rival. And uh, it would be cool if we poached a guy and then went and beat him with him. So that would be pretty cool. All right. Uh, let's move over to the running game. The Owls bring back their leading rusher from a year ago, Michael Benefield. In addition to Benefield, Field, Alexander Diggs, Josiah Clemens, and Gabriel Benyard also return. This seems like a very deep room with lots of game experience. How did that room uh, shape up in the spring? Um, I think it's the best unit on the team outside of maybe um, the secondary. Um, Michael Benefield was one of the few highlights from last year. He had a really, really solid year. Um, I think he only he probably only played eight games. Um, Garland Benyard isn't really a true running back or wide out. He's kind of a Swiss army knife, but he'll get carries. I'm sure. Um, Diggs got some time last year. He's a solid, um, second option, um, workhorse. And then Josiah Clemens was a former walk on that earned a scholarship. Um, he's not going to get a ton of carries, but he's a good leader and voice in that room. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely our most comfortable unit, and we're going to have to lean on them a lot. We leaned on them a lot last year because we couldn't really throw the ball moving offenses, um, and they they kept us in games. Um, you know, we know we're not going to be able to score a whole lot, so we got to eat up clock. Um, but, yeah. So in terms of workload, do you think Benefield's kind of the, the main guy and we'll get the lion's share of the carries there? Uh, I think Benefield will get the most carries um, and they're going to try and work Ben Yard in as much as possible. I think we'll see him in the backfield some. Uh, Diggs is going to get his reps too, for sure. Um, and then if one of those guys gets down, um, Clemens is a solid option to step up and be RB2. All right, moving over to the, the receivers. They return a lot of guys last year and and I didn't really know where to put Ben Yard because like you said, like is he a running back? Is he a slot receiver? I wasn't really sure. So I talk about him here in the receivers as well. So, you know, he returns uh, Blake Bohannon and Tykeem Wallace kind of highlight the returners. Um, they did lose wide receiver Isaac Foster to graduation. Then they bring in Christian Moss from Virginia Tech and then Justin Thomas from Memphis. Thomas didn't come in until after spring practice. But uh, what do we need to know about this wide receiver room here heading into 2024? Yeah, it's a, a sneaky good unit, I think. Um, you mentioned Ben Yard. I think he'll be in the slot some. Um, they might move him outside some. Um, like I said, he's a Swiss Army knife. Um, we're really excited about Christian Moss. Um, he transferred over from Virginia Tech um, and actually got some playing time over there as a freshman. Um, and, you know, the reason he's here is because this is home. He went to North Cobb High School, which is in Kennesaw. So, um, we feel like we maybe got somebody better than, you know, we should have because of location, but we'll take it. Uh, I don't think Thomas played much at Memphis, um, but he was fairly well rated. We all hope we see him play. Uh, Bohannon brings a little bit of experience. Um, he's always been a solid blocker. Um, he's got steady hands, you know, he's not going to torch anybody, but he'll run a good route. He'll get open. Um, he'll be fine. Um, and then Tyke Wallace, uh, I think we all want to see more. The kid is, he's probably the fastest dude on the team. Um, he's a track star really, really fast. Uh, I think he only scored one touchdown and I mean, he went like 60 yards untouched on that one touchdown. So, um, it's a, I think it's a decent unit. Uh, it's going to aid, uh, whatever weird quarterback situation we have going on. Um, like there are some real weapons there. Um, and hopefully we get them the ball some more than we did last year. So just kind of give folks some perspective. Uh, ben Yard only played in four games last year, but he led the team in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. Yep. He ran 70 routes, which is fourth most on the team, but he played five less games um, than last year. So, you know, in the games he was playing, he was heavily involved in that passing offense. Do you think we can expect the same here in 2024? Oh, yeah. And the offense was completely different. I would have to go back and look, but – um, those four games that he played um, were the only games that we were pushing, you know, 30 points every weekend. Um, the other ones were real struggles. But um, just for clarity, the reason he played four games is because they were saving him. They were keeping his red shirt and, you know, getting him some reps in those four games and then sitting him the rest of the year. Um, but he he's weapon number one. He's the best player on the offensive side of the ball. 
Um, this is for sure. And we're lucky to have held on to him, honestly. So if, you, if you're the head coach, um, week one, UTSA, who are you rolling out there at receiver? Uh, I think Moss will be out there. Um, I think Bohannon will be out there a good bit. Um, we'll see with Thomas. Uh, I think we'll, I think we'll see some of everybody. Um, but I think the two guys day one, um, as far as wideouts go, at least are going to be, uh, Moss and Bohannon. That's just a prediction though. Who knows? All right. If you were to describe how tight ends are utilized in this offense to someone who has never caught a Kennesaw State game, how would you describe it? Um, borderline foreign concept. Um, you know, you come from the triple option, and we didn't have a tight end for eight years. Um, and then we start working him in last year. Um, Carson Kent uh, had some – he looked good in a few games. We didn't get him the ball a whole lot, though. Um, it's – it, it's still a thing we're trying to learn, I guess. Uh, we didn't get a ton of production from him last year, but we've got some guys in that room. Um, hopefully we see more this year. It's going to be weird if we revert more towards the triple option again, like I think we will, but we keep the tight end room, how we're going to use them. Um, Preston Daniels was what we call a B-back, um, so basically like the bigger running back within the triple option. Um, and they moved him to tight end, and he's just an absolute unit. Um, and so we've been waiting to see that potential be unlocked and see him run over somebody, you know, catching a ball down the seam. Um, but it's, it's still unknown. We're still figuring it out. Uh, I would like to say that we're going to see real progression this year, but you know, with another offensive coordinator switch, uh, I doubt it a little bit. All right. Uh, moving over to the offensive line. And I got to tell you, it was, it was fairly intriguing. Um, you know, we're interviewing, folks from every single G5 team, so 64 teams, and I think you're like number 55. So we got nine more to go, I think, after tonight. And and I haven't seen anything like this yet when doing the research on the offensive line. And, you know, most guys kind of stay at one position, um, maybe two. But it, it seems like your, your offensive line last year, you're like, like if they played tackle, they played left and right tackle. Same way with the guards. If they played guard, they played – uh, left and right guard, and then even the center played center, left guard, and right guard. Um, so it just it just seemed like you know a, a lot of movement and a lot of versatility on that offensive line. Can you um, kind of share? Is, is there a reason for that, or, or they were just trying to find the right mix? And, and how did that unit look in the spring? Uh, well, you uh, you're very nice by calling it versatility. That was um, that was just kind of what had to happen. Um, you know, last year was just a mess. Uh, and it, it had to be, you know, it, it's not me complaining. Um, but last year you had so many guys, number one, get hurt. We had a lot of injuries on the O-line. Um, then we had a lot of guys that we wanted to save. So we redshirted. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't just the offensive line. It was the whole team. You know, you're just seeing a different lineup basically every week. Um, and the O-line got so thin and so confusing that, you know, guys had to step up and play positions that they weren't recruited to play. Um, you know, I, in your notes, you said something about Al Hogan. He was a fifth year senior. He was all over the place. Um, but he stayed healthy. So he was always in the lineup, you know? Um, I mean, it was, it was chaos. Um, and there should be more stability this year because at least we get to stick with the same group and we brought a lot of kids in. So, um, it needs to be better, but we're expecting it to be. You have, uh, any, any predictions on who maybe starts uh, their week one versus UTSA? Honestly, I couldn't give you anything. Um, we brought so many JUCO guys in. I mean, we went the route of um, going and finding guys out in the middle of nowhere in Iowa, Kansas. Uh, I think we got a kid from Montana. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's, it's whoever's the best in the camp. We brought so many guys in that some of them got to be good, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. If you have to pick an offensive player to have a breakout type season here in 2024, who are you going to pick? Uh, I'm going to go with Carson Kent, the tight end. Um, I know I said that I don't know how the tight end situation is going to go, but uh, he looked really nice when he did play last year. Um, I think there's an urgency to get him the ball. Uh, he's kind of being used in some of like the school marketing stuff. Um, he's a, he's a good looking player. Um, 
uh, that's that's who I'd have to pick. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're listening to in podcast form, please rate and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hive. Oh, <laughs>